Alright, so um, again, I did a little bit more research on um, Tesla's work, and um, I, you know, doing like his old um, research stuff and you know the pens and everything. I made like this. It's kind of like sci-fi, but I mean, it, it could be true one day. And so, a lot of times Tesla talked about um, towers that would, <coughs> excuse me, would uh, make like energy effects that could, uh, you know, tr you know, be transferred through the earth. And then you set up resonant waves on the Earth, and at every so many miles or a th you know, thousand miles, you can pull the energy back out in this in its you know same form and turn it back into currents. And then you you know you can run machinery and industry and whatever. But um, he also talked about if you built even larger towers than the Warden Cliff, um, then you could have interplanetary energy transfer. And so that's what I named this one: Tesla Interplanetary Energy Transfer. And so throughout his life, he um, talked about this every so often you see like little things again like you know you'd say maybe we can transport millions of horsepower to the moon or you know or communicate with other um, intelligent people because yeah you're, you're making such a effect on the earth that you could you, that you're really sending out also pulses of energy through space to planets and everything and so that's what this one's about so uh, here we go <coughs> So a little brief history. Um, throughout like his work, he uh, came across the effect of electrostatics, and really, it's like um, this is like one of the important things. This is where like the energy production stuff can be transported. And electro books don't really even go over electrostatics that much. They usually only show like charged spheres, and they're um, you know they're giving off like a, a, a electrostatic field, and they talk about capacitors, and that's really only it. But Tesla's thing you know, focuses more on that and makes it different discoveries because of, you know, the way his coils and everything set up. So when he first started, he started with the induction coil and I was around like like eighteen like eighties to like nineteen hundred he built like these induction coils and it's just basically it looks like the beginning of what is the neon sign transformers where it's making a high voltage in a small type transformer. And that's what it is. So you take a high frequency source of energy you put it through the primary and then it steps up the energy in the secondary and it puts it out on these wires and he's shown all types of different effects in his um like his bulb research and everything and, and the importance he also shown was the air core and uh, again it allows for free up vibrations like I said before and then one, from this coil design he made the one wire model and um and this the passive inductive effects and the resistance is still you know there and um it's the energy is in, contained in the wire, pretty much, and it does make like a field around it. And so, you know, like I said before, you have the primary; it's being excited by a frequency. You know, it makes the high voltages in the secondary um, storage can be made in the capacitor top, and um, that helps magnify the effect. And then the energy is sent through the wire to either another coil or just down the wire to either like a bulb with a capacitive terminal, or even here he's showing the. Uh, um, small inductive type motor where the field is changing hair makes his uh, like positive and negative effects on this plate and he made a simple very simple motor by the changing of the signs and um, what's also interesting he talked about resonant waves being set up on the wire and so you know you see resonant stationary wave here and it would have areas where there's really high energy output and he also shown this effect by taking the capacitive thing like here he used a piece of metal and he showed that um, you could have a bulb that wouldn't light up, but once you put that capacitive terminal, it would change the resonance. It would change the resonance of the wire, and so the energy would be transferred right to the bulb. So yeah, when you take it off, the bulb wouldn't light because these waves aren't on the bulb. But then once you put the capacitive terminal, it's changing the, the whole parameters of the wire again, and you tune in the energy right to the bulb, so it would light up brighter. And he made it. He ended up making that really efficient, lighting up high-powered stuff. <clears throat> I kind of show that in mine. I mean, I'm not as high-powered as his, but I show that effect with the capacitive plate, and also transfer of energy to another coil where it can be stepped down into currents. And so from here, he took that information on a small scale, and made it larger. And um, I was at his Colorado Springs. And so what he did is he took the one wire model and. Um, instead of you know just sending it down that thin wire using the earth as the one wire like I said before and um, what the important it, importance is 
is that the immensity of the planet has less resistance than wire of small uh, size and it's kind of interesting because you think it's so big that it'd be too resistive but what's happening is that the energy is um because like if you look up wire size to how energy transfers through it the earth is a massive thick wire and its um, cross-sectional area is really wide so the energy doesn't have a lot of resistance to go through and if you look it up I, I forgot to write the equation down but there's like the cross-sectional area of a wire to the amount of resistance in it so the more small the wire like this the more resistance it has and um, so the, you know the capacitive inductive effect is different here than when it's really on an immense scale like the, the earth and so, if you look, the, uh, I show like the transmitter, and it was like a basic type Tesla coil thing, uh, resonating everything, and you ground it through the earth, and then, through that, it makes the action on the earth, and transfers energy to either another receiver at the full amount of energy, or smaller receivers, and, um, you know, you're at the quarter wavelength, so the energy is transferred, um, you know, with the full amount of energy. But you can also have receivers at odd harmonics of the fundamental frequency. And so, what that means is that, you know, the coil can be, uh, you know, portions of the wave, the resonance. So, like, say you have, like, ten, uh, what was I going to say, like, you have, like, ten windings here, and it'll be, like, a hundred here. You know what I mean? It's, like, a portion of it. I mean... You know, it's, it has to be at the odd harmonics of it. And um, what that is, is you get, you get energy transferred pretty efficiently, but it's less energy. And so you could actually have smaller devices running. And in this case, from his historic, from the historical point of view, he would have had watches back then. And it would have been, in, you know, inductively grounded type idea. And it would have less energy, but enough to make, you know, pick up the radio waves. Um and uh, be able to tune to them so you could walk around with the watch not never have to charge it and you know wouldn't have dangerous energy right on your skin with the watch there because of the resonance so you have like medium sized coils and you can have even small ones like the watch device slash cell phone device that he would have made back then